Hi everyone at Maricourt School. It was really good to get to know you. If you weren't able to make the sessions, I'm gonna run through a little summary now of week one and things we went through. It's important to know that there's 600,000 job roles estimated in the world. And there's gonna be some that are new ones that maybe even you create through being an entrepreneur or a creative kind of business owner. So the world's gonna need a lot of different things from us. And in week one, we focused on looking at the types of people and the types of environment that are going to stimulate you or do the opposite and actually drain you in a job. For me, having had about 20 different types of jobs in my life, uh, as an actor, you need a lot of jobs on the side. And one thing that I've seen in a lot of different jobs that I've experienced uh, and something I've noticed with my dad's job, my dad's a, an entrepreneur, he started a business with my granddad in, uh, in Cheshire, so that's where I grew up, not far from you guys. And one thing I noticed from his business that there are two types of things that affect you more than any other thing in a job, for better or for worse, the types of people and the type of environment. So in week one, we talked a lot about environment. And we looked at what that means and we looked at firstly noticing the environment we're in. We don't often think about putting our phone away, procrastinating, actually the idea of actually sometimes having nothing to do in a space and actually absorbing in that moment what's in front of you. Because there's so many clues to what types of environments we like to be in and what, which ones stimulate us, which might be good for our jobs. There's so many clues in the present moment, wherever we are, we often miss them. So in week one, we looked at as many things as you could recognize in the room within 60 seconds, then closing our eyes, really bringing those ideas back. We thought about then the types of environments which we feel comfortable in at home, an environment where we can do two things. We can gather knowledge, and secondly, an environment which we can develop skills in. And that's what a job is. It's a mixture of knowledge and a mixture of skills. And then how you behave in that environment amongst other people. So we looked at the favourite environments that year sevens, eights and nines have at home. And some of the things that came out were great. Someone said being by the fireplace, just looking at their, their dog sat there, chilled out near the fire and the sound of it, the feeling of the heat. Someone else said being in their spare room upstairs where their brother has now gone to uni and they get to use that room as a chill out room. And thinking about the chair faces the garden and the idea of nature, what you can see in your eye line can either give, it, give you a negative idea of the future or it can give you a positive idea of the future. Being able to see outside green space is very relaxing, but also someone said they like being outside. Their favorite space is not in the house. It's actually when it's lashing down with rain and they're playing football. So thinking about these environments that we like to be in are so, so important because that's what a job is about. Do you want to be stood up? Do you want to be sat down in a job? Do you want to be talking to new people every day? Do you not want to be talking to new people every day? So after we thought about the home environments that are good for us, we started to look at what kind of environments that you guys might want to actually be in in the future and be stimulated by. So we thought about everything to do with, yes, yeah, standing up, temperature, sounds, smells, really thinking about your senses so you can enjoy being in work and use the idea of thinking of environments to choose the type of route you want to go down. So as we had one student said uh, about being a train driver, which is great, being able to be on their own because they're quite shy and you are in your own little world in that cabin, but being able to always see the scenery but really be responsible for a lot of people who are on the train. Someone said about being a Royal Navy engineer being able to be at sea or in these huge, he loves open spaces. We said being able to be in these open aircraft hangars and be in overalls and be kind of on his back and kind of um, fixing things on the planes and problem solving. Someone else said being able to be a novelist, so potentially being an author because they love creative writing, but also about loving science. So maybe being a creative writer about a science character, which sounds really cool. Someone else said wanting to work with animals in nature, but not just in nature, but in the rainforests, which is great. Someone said about being a children's nurse. Someone else said 
about wanting to own their own salon and hairdressers and having to be able to deal with new clients and be able to grow a business and then think about how they decorate the place, the branding, the uniforms. And that's great. So we really got the students thinking about their environment that they like to be in and really being able to build those clues or sense those clues and notice those clues every single day while they're at home and when they do work experience, the idea of going out of their comfort zones. Nothing is a failure when you learn an important lesson from it to develop your knowledge and develop your skills or develop your behavior in a working environment. So we looked at quotes on failure. So we got students to not only choose their favorite quote on failure and reflect on what that actually means, but also be able to go away and try and bring back for week two a quote on failure that they like, that they found online, or one that they create themselves. So being able to have a mantra that they can keep coming back to in their own heads or hopefully print off in their environment, in their room or in their favorite place and be able to keep reminding themselves of that idea that it's good to go out your comfort zone and to try new things in life, which social media doesn't always uh, give us the chance to do because we think that we have to be liked by everyone, we have to be perfect when that is not how the world works. Some of the quotes we had, I've not failed, I've just found 10,000 ways that didn't work. That's by Thomas Edison, who invented the light bulb and electricity, which is a great one. That it took 10,000 wrong things to work out the right way to do it. And that's gonna happen over, over COVID and this weird time we live in. There's gonna be those times when, hopefully not 10,000, but there's gonna be those times where things don't go right. But the idea is that the whole point of things going wrong is it's a process. It's not a finite thing, it's part of a journey to eventually coming up with the right way to do something. So that might apply to your exams, it might apply to your knowledge, it might apply to your choices, it might apply to the types of environments that you feel you wanna work in or the types of people you wanna be around. It's all a road trip in life, it's a life journey. And when things go right, it's never the end. When things go wrong, it's never the end. And this was a quote by one of my favorite guys called Michael J. Fox, who's a famous actor. He also suffers badly from Parkinson's when he got diagnosed in his 20s. And uh, his quote is, I am careful not to confuse excellence with perfection. Excellence I can reach for, perfection is God's business. And I love that. It's not about us being perfect in life. It's about using every day of our lives to keep developing, keep questioning things, keep questioning what we want from life, the types of people and the types of environments that we wanna be in. Finally, week one, we also looked at power poses. We looked at self-confidence. So we looked at poses you can do, such as the Superman pose like this. We looked at power poses like this. We looked at simple, ways where we can build our confidence. We rolled our shoulders back to make sure we had a straight back. We had hands on hips or hands comfortably on shoulders. Breathe in for three through the nose, hold for four, breathe out for five. So breathe in for three, hold for four, and breathe out for five. And we repeated that process. Two minutes of a power pose, not this, that's a closed pose, but not a negative, but a real confident pose. And two minutes of holding that actually convinces our brains that we're more confident and we can do things that we thought we couldn't do before. So a power pose layered with breathing, getting calm, getting oxygen into our lungs, into our diaphragm, breathing right into this bit just above our stomach lining, where it's an oxygen rich area of our body. So nice deep breaths can help us stay calm, can help us think better, think more clearly, and can help us focus on what we're doing so we don't get panicked. So power pose, breathing, and then we closed our eyes and we really rehearsed in a positive way us being able to do those jobs we mentioned in the environments we mentioned. So that's a recap of week one. I'll hopefully see you all for week two. And parents, if you're watching this, and hopefully you are, it's a good summary to be able to hopefully remind some of these students about these messages in the home every single day and help them work on exploring the types of environments and the types of people they want to be around. Because as I say, those are two huge foundations to 
a healthy working environment.